Hey, we're Chips and Salsa. In today's video, we're reviewing our history curriculum, History Revealed. Hey guys, welcome back. It's Dee Dee and Jimena. Also known as the Chips and Salsa Ladies. If you're new to our channel, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell button so you don't miss another video. We want you to be part of our community. Follow us on social media, Instagram and Facebook and our Facebook community group so that we can stay connected. Yeah, we're all about encouraging and empowering one another through fun, practical and encouraging tips. In today's video, we're reviewing History Revealed. It's been our first year using this curriculum and it's been really great. Yeah, it's by Diana Waring and I came across her just by, I was trying to uh, Google high school right. curriculum, like kind of unit study type um, history curriculum and I found it and I just really loved what she had to say and what she had to offer. We just wanna let you know that we receive this curriculum for free in exchange for our honest review. All right, so history revealed. So it's for middle school and high school, mm -hmm. but she has this great little addition for elementary school kids in case you want to teach uh, you know, a, your group of kids at the same time, which we recommend. Yeah, we used it for seventh and eighth grade and, and then Jimena's high schoolers in 10th grade this year. So I do wanna say something. My daughter, on top of using the curriculum, um, is also taking an online live class with Diana, which she offers on her website. So check that out because we also did receive that for free for a review and we're gonna review all of it. But all, I have only good things to say about her class because my daughter is just absolutely loving it. Well, that was really great because you really wanted to challenge her as a high schooler, but also maintain that, you know, learning history together as a group, which we've been doing all along. Yeah, so basically she gets together once a week. Diana is the main instructor and it's like full of students, not only from the United States, but sometimes there's people from different parts of the world and that is really exciting because they get to do group projects together and they get to share their projects live and just to know that you have that accountability has really helped my daughter. So mm -hmm. Diana, thank you because they're really rich lectures. So I feel like everything that I do at home is just reinforced in her class and you don't have to do both. I think you could do one or the other. Um, she does have to read from the book, but it's, um, we read from the book together and then I just let her go on her own and then I reinforce with documentaries and things that we do that we'll get into later. I do also want to preface this video by saying that up until this point for elementary school and for the middle school, we have focused a lot on history. Yeah. So our kids have gone through Story of the World. My school students have gone through Story of the World twice, both all four volumes. And um, we used Bookshark curriculum in the past, which has a ton of rich literature, um, historical fiction, and uh, as well as biographies and stuff. So our kids have a good history foundation. Yeah, we basically use history as our spine. And then we branch out from there with literature and everything else. And that's just really the way we've always homeschooled and we love it. So coming into this year, we were looking for world history. We had already started world history from ancient times. We moved through the middle ages and now we were at the modern history. So this, the timing of this was perfect. Yes. Yeah, so this curriculum is called World Empires, World Missions, and World Wars. Now, we do have to say we have a couple of videos where we talk about this already, our curriculum choice video, and then an unboxing video where we show you everything that's in it. So if you wanna know all those details, go there and check it out. All right, well, we're gonna get into the details of how we use it and just kind of broken up by phases, but we do wanna share with you guys really quick how we do it with our co-op. Yeah, it's really fun to do the same curriculum because we get together for co-op twice a month and we read a book together. So we'll talk about the books that we chose that go along with this curriculum. And then we choose a poem that fits within that same theme. Then we choose an art project and music. Jimena gave us amazing music lessons this year by the decade, and that was really fun. So the kids keep all their notes and their scraps in a cool scrapbook, and you could see some of the 
pictures of different musical artists and uh, that the kids learned about. And it was just, I mean, it's been so fun. We're at the halfway point now and I'm just looking forward to the next couple of months. Yeah, the way we like to learn history is to submerge completely into it, right? Through stories, through music, through art, because that way they're just getting a full 360 picture of what it was like. We have a few videos about how we do our co-op, so check those out. All right, well, let's talk about the three resources that you're gonna use the most. You have your lesson planner, you have your teacher guide, and then you have your student guide. I ended up getting an extra student guide for each of my kids because I wanted each of them to have their own. Yeah, I did the same thing. We're actually gonna start you with this quick reference guide that really helped us because it is a little bit confusing when you first get the curriculum and you don't quite understand how it works. So this really explains it that each unit is broken up into four phases. So basically it's four weeks on one unit. In phase one, you're gonna be diving into a new topic. So there's an article in your student guide that you're going to read, there's CDs to listen to, and we're doing a lot of recapping and learning. In phase two, we're exploring. So this is where your research is gonna come in. We're looking at a timeline. Phase three is hands-on activities. So she's really good about showing you how you can learn kinesthetically or audio or um, through the arts. And then in phase four, an expression, writing a poem, doing a drama, more art. However you learn, uh, you can express yourself in phase four. Yeah, and the premium pack comes with this um, really cool interviews of eight kinds of smarts, which I think is really helpful to just so you get to know your own child and know how they learn, because that's what all this is for. So this is a helpful tool. So next is the lesson planner. And in here, she really uh, tries to help us kind of plan out what each unit is gonna look like. So you have month one or unit one at a glance. So here's a little quick guide to what you're gonna do in each of the units. So you see here you're learning, then you're um, exploring. Uh, here they have a little bowl, so maybe you're cooking or you're doing something hands-on, and then you're expressing or the art side of it. This was really helpful because we ended up choosing one book per unit, well, two books per unit, one for a read aloud and one as a reader. You can check out our read aloud selections on the video card, and we'll go through our readers in a little bit. But these uh, booklets kind of helped us to, you know, kind of get an idea of what we were looking for. Unfortunately, we didn't find these titles specifically, not all of them. Um, some of them were out of print or weren't available at our library, but um, still it was very useful as far as topics. She also has a couple of suggestions about how to use the curriculum. So here's a five day plan, a three day plan. And then if you're just overwhelmed, here's just the really important things that maybe you wanna hone in on here in this corner. And then this goes into the daily lesson plans, right? So she breaks it down for you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. This didn't quite work for me because we have a different schedule. On Mondays, our kids are doing their online classes, right? Um, but again, you can customize this to what works for you. As you can see, I really didn't utilize this either, but here you would write down any books, what research you're doing, any presentations they're doing that is gonna go into your phase two, which is where you're gonna be doing your research and exploring, and the kids are gonna choose a topic to present. Yeah, and it just kind of repeats itself again, breaking it down per day. Now, the reason why we didn't use this as much is because we have a planner that we where we incorporate all of our subjects, and that just it's easier for us to have one reference versus one for history, one for language arts, et cetera. So that's why we you know, didn't use it as much. Um, and as you can see, it's just the same thing for each phase. And that's the end of the first unit. And then this would be unit two. These were really helpful as well because again, it's topics that we could, when we were choosing our books, it really helped us to um, choose the books and different um, documentaries that we were gonna look at. At the very beginning of that teacher planner guide though, there was this page, which I did find super helpful. As you can see, I wrote in the unit for each and the dates that they covered because that kind of helped me organize my mind around what these units were gonna be covering and what books were gonna go along with these units. 
We actually looked into these books and looked at the date ranges and wrote it down here just so that we could have a quick glance at that. All right, next is the teacher guide. So it seems overwhelming when you first look at it because it's thick and there's a lot of writing. She starts you off with an introduction that shows you how to use the curriculum and just gives you a lot of tips as a teacher, as a parent, and also, again, about the different learning styles and how to really respect that and observe it. So I found this information pretty useful and it was pretty inspiring. But let's go to the first unit and look at phrase one so you can see what it looks like. In the teacher guide, you have a shrink and copy of what the kids are gonna have in their student guide, which is the articles that go along with the unit, as well as uh, some options for what they're gonna research. Yeah, so the first phase basically just focuses on reading and listening. It's an introduction, right, to what you're gonna be covering. So there's a lot of notes here for us as parents to read so that we have an even more in-depth view of what we're gonna be reading. It's just great to be able to guide the discussions. I have found this very useful, have you? Oh yeah, I love that she included this because some of these concepts I didn't know. Yeah, it's awesome. Here she has, at the end of the phase one, recap activities that you can do. Some of these were like in bigger groups, but if you have a spatial learner, kinesthetic, interpersonal, they're just really cool little suggestions. But the point is, you wanna review the concepts that you read about. So she has some, also some discussion questions here to kind of guide the discussion along. All right, so that's basically what you're gonna get in your teacher guide as you're going along. We're gonna show you the student guide now so that you could see what this actually entails, which is really the meat of the curriculum. All right, so this is the student guide, which is basically like their textbook, but it doesn't really read like a textbook. And there's some um, really cool things here about, again, the different learning styles and some tips on how you can actually uh, do some passive learning or active learning and I like it because it kind of puts the um, responsibility on them am mm -hmm. I going to be a passive learner or an active learner right and I've seen my daughter take some notes and you know become more active as she encourages them all right so as you can see unit one is this is the what we were looking at in the teacher guide right and usually want the phase one this is about how much you're going to be reading I break it up into two days because, you know, there's a lot of information here. Yeah, what we do, each of us have a book. So I have the teacher guide and both my students have a copy of this book and we'll just read a paragraph each and go around the circle. We do the same thing and I have them break out their highlighters and, and highlight what they think is important. And if they don't know what that is, I kind of guide them through it. So. This is what phase one looks like. And at the end of phase one, she has, you know, a little checklist here of what to do. So, so she has some CDs that are included in the premium guide, What in the World, and then there's True Tales and Digging Deeper. In What in the World, it's gonna be a lecture that really expounds on the reading that we already watched. And that has been really entertaining. Yeah, I like it a lot. And then True Tales, is also really entertaining because it goes deeper into more of the lives of the characters that we're learning. Yeah, here in unit one, it was William Carey and William Wilberforce, two really dynamic men of God that impacted the world greatly in that time period. And then there's digging deeper, which again, it's kind of the same thing, right? There's more facts. It's just going deeper into each topic. Yeah, and this one, she does talk a lot about um, the revivals and you see here faith in the universities. So what was happening in the world of Christendom during each of these time periods and how it has really changed Christianity? I do have to say though that I find it overwhelming to have to read that whole thing and listen to all these things in one week. Mm -hmm. We just don't seem to have that amount of time. So what I did is I broke it up into different weeks. So phase one, um, we listen to what in the world in phase phases two and three we listen to true tales and then in phases four digging deeper or we break it up differently depending on how many tracks we let she assigns for each CD so really um, you can make it your own but the point is that we don't listen to everything in phase one and we have found that helpful in addition to 
the CDs and reading the article. Me and Humana both like to put together playlists on YouTube so we can watch videos. And with that and all the other stuff, it really opens up to some great discussions. And she has some talking points here which are also helpful. And then there's the critical thinking also, right, which goes into a higher level of thinking. And we have used these a couple of times, but it's good for recapping. She has tons of book resources, as you saw in the uh, lesson planner. And then here again, as some more, um, I think the same resources, but in yeah. a different format. So this is great because right here, um, again, this is what we look to when we're looking for movies or documentaries. Um, we did watch Amazing Grace and it was just really awesome. So it's a good reference to have. And then here the kids can write in, you know, what they liked and there's a self-reflection. Yeah, so I haven't been as consistent in using this, but I did when I did do it, I saw great value in having them self-evaluate because it touches on the key concepts that are gonna be on the unit test, and that way they have their own idea of how much they understood, how much they paid attention, and maybe how much they need to dive into throughout the unit so that they have more of a grasp on it. And you had your kids write right in the book? Yes, they wrote right in the book. Yeah, so I'm more of like, photocopy, but I guess you can do that too. Phase two. All right, so phase two goes into research and reporting. So this is where they're gonna actually start to do an assignment, right? And so they give you choices. And by the way, they don't have to choose from here. They can actually choose anything they want, but these are great ideas. Um, so they get to choose from here and do a research report. Now the research report can be um, done as a presentation, it could be done in Google Slides, which my kids have done. It can even be done, um, you know, just a good old report. My daughter is a fairly young seventh grader, so I helped her out, especially on this first go around, with giving her questions to explore for her topic. And then she wrote in her answer, so the colored Part is her and then she actually created a poster board and gave a oral report to the whole family and that was really fun yeah that is great um, I know for the higher level especially like the online class Diana really encourages them to look to ask themselves why and how questions right when they are reporting so that they go deeper into the topic uh, versus just like a bio biographical report. So here is um, so something that my son in seventh grade also did, and um, he's he tends to do a lot of um, of Google Slides, and so he kind of likes to do that, but this one he did right out. My daughter did a really cool group one uh, with her online class, and so she, her and a couple other of the girls there um, one of them is from Peru, which I thought was really cool. Nice. And so they put together this nice report, which I was really proud of them for because they really worked hard and just the whole team organization um, and, you know, getting together and all that stuff took a lot of good skills. So it was great. In phase two, she also includes a timeline activity, which we love because we're always, we've been doing timelines for years. And so I just copied it out and included it into their history folder. And then we filled in some of the key dates that were covered in that unit. She also includes some vocabulary words, which are pretty awesome. I, we used to use spelling vocabulary city, and I would just input these in, in there. And that way they could practice them throughout uh, the week or two weeks. And um, now we use study.com because it's just easy. I could just input them in there and they can study them that way. Yeah. Again, there's another student evaluation, which is really helpful. And then we move to phase three. So phase three, this is one of the activities that they can choose, although we have chosen to do it as just kind of an activity that we must do. Um, so I've included that in our um, phase three mapping activity. I'll show you what that looks like in my son's history folder. So here we did a mapping activity. I printed it again and then we colored in the different regions that we were studying during that unit. Okay, so phase three, they get to choose, like I said, from mapping, um, art appreciation. My daughter did um, something on Claude Monet, which, you know, it's an art analysis and she gets to kind of analyze uh, two pieces of art or um, 
one piece of art, whatever the assignment says. But I thought it was pretty cool and she did a very nice job on that. What we've done through phase three is to actually look at art on YouTube or just pull some art up on the computer and just talk about it without making them do a physical report. Yeah, that's great. So then there's also architecture, arts and action, which they choose a lot because then they get to just paint and really yeah. um, take advantage of that. I have a couple of paintings here from our last unit when we were studying Impressionism with Monet. And then uh, there's science too, which my son has enjoyed because he's science minded. And then there's cooking, which I know your daughter has really enjoyed. Oh, yeah, she really loved. Actually, she made this dish for the whole family and it was really fun. That's great. And then again, they get to do the self-evaluation. So a lot of you may be asking yourselves, well, how do we how do we evaluate a project? And um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. There is a rubric that she gives you, so just hang in there. Right. Finally, phase four. And in phase four, it's really expressing all these things that we have learned in some sort of artistic way. So you see here as examples, journalism or poetry or prose. And I love the poems my kids have written. Yes, my kids never wanted to write a poem before and all of a sudden they're into it because you know after a while they're like well I already did a drawing I already did this so I love that they're exploring different expressions and they want to explore different expressions so here's one example my daughter did this uh, it was a graphic design assignment on Louis Philippe and it was supposed to be some sort of propaganda and so she really enjoyed doing this on Canva. My son has done a couple of these too which I that thought was pretty cool. Awesome. <laughs> My son had fun writing a poem this last unit um, talking about revolution and war as we were just studying the, Re the Russian Revolution. I thought it was pretty cute. Boom boom pow. My son also wrote one for the Russian Revolution on uh, Nicholas, the death of Nicholas. It's kind of a uh, grim but <laughs> he did a good job at it too just uh, from the perspective of, of Nicholas II and my daughter who has never in her life wanted to write a poem before wrote one and she did such a great job this was um, unit one so I think it was about I mean, it was one of the wars I forget but it's um, it was called capable and I thought she did a great job. That's so cool. My son has also done some cartooning. Uh, he's a great artist. And I know our sons together have done a video. Yeah, that was really awesome. My son has even dared to compose some music online. And he, I thought, you know, he was a little frustrated because he was like, oh, this wasn't as easy as I thought. But I just loved that he went for it. That's so good. And then your daughter has done drama and pantomime, huh? She has, and it was really surprising and fun she did so great so there's puppetry comedy there's all kinds of things and like I said you don't have to stick to these if they have an idea they can go for that and then again there's a student self-evaluation and that would conclude one full unit you've gone through four phases and then you'd move on to the new unit now as far as evaluating what they learned in each unit she has provided us with a test kit and then also some rubric sets so you can see in each each uh, phase has its own rubric. And there's an art project rubric, there's a mapping uh, rubric, and she has one for all of them. So that way you can give that to your child and be like, this is what I'm expecting. And then that way they know why you're grading them the way that you are. For the test kit, I decided that I didn't want to have test anxiety for my middle schoolers. <laughs> so I really was pretty lenient with my grading. And this was so helpful because I found that they did a great job when I didn't stress about grammar and spelling. Nice. I, so I told them, as long as you have a full, complete sentence and you answer each question, you're gonna get an A. And so I found that they really worked hard on this and it was really great review and really great to see them write full sentences. <laughs> That's a great idea. My son has a really hard time writing, so I allowed him to fill this out and then do everything else just typed, and then he'll submit it to me on a, on a Word document, mm -hmm. and then that way I grade that. He just feels a lot freer being able to type, so. Nice. You can customize it to the way that's best for your children. 
My daughter actually takes her unit test directly with Diana online, which has been wonderful for me. And actually, Diana is the one that grades all her projects. So that takes a big weight off of me. So I just have to grade my sons. And so that's awesome. That's another awesome benefit of the online class is that you have somebody who's doing that for your daughter or son. And then, um, you know, just you can relax. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about the elementary activity book because although I don't have any elementary students, I did actually use this a few times and it was pretty fun. So I'll show you how it's laid out. Here's a note to the teacher. And then here for unit one, she has the Bible verses and some stuff to talk about, some suggested reading books to read together. And then you saw the long article. This is an abbreviated version of the article with just a couple of concepts. So just one uh, missionary and one historical figure. So for phase two, she's gonna give some kind of word activity that's gonna bring in the research and the learning vocabulary. In phase three, there's a hands-on craft and usually some kind of food to make for the phase three hands-on activity. This one, there's a maze and lots of the units. There's a map for this part. And then phase four, that's where we're doing the expression. So she has where you can draw. Here she's suggesting draw Napoleon as an emperor. And then creative fun with history. This one's a silly song, which was really fun. We did sing this together. <laughs> and then I also used it again in phase two. I'll just skip ahead. My daughter loves activity sheets. So we did this to review their activities and the words. And then my uh, son and daughter uh, made a video skit of themselves and they used this script as their jumping off point. So they used this script and they created a video that was hilarious. Learning about and sharing with their family about Florence Nightingale. It was fun. Well, that's just goes to show you that really there is no grade specific anything. You can adapt anything to any grade to suit your child. And so that's what's really valuable about all of this. Here are all of the read alouds that we chose to go along with the themes of these units for this year. If you want to know more about this, check out our video. It's in the description below. Right here are our readers. So these are books that are children read independently and we try to choose things that are easy for them to read um, and we have run into some snafus because you know we don't know until we know right one book that's not on here is the scarlet pimpernel which we read about the french revolution and the kids really enjoyed that um, but we have it on kindle so that's why it's not here juba was a great book about african-american man during slavery dancing it was perfect level for a reader but it was awesome too because we Charles Dickens comes up in this book and we were reading all of our twists simultaneously. So yeah. it went right along with it. That's always fun. And then Nori Ryan's song was about the potato famine and it was also really age appropriate. Good choice. I think the kids really uh, enjoyed Choo Choo's house, or some of our kids did. I think my son didn't love it as much, but my daughter did. And so that was good. It was also about um, the child limit in China. And it just talks about this girl who basically tries to save her sibling. Then we also read The Kitchen Boy, which is about the last czar, and we were surprised about cussing and some sexual references in here. So we actually stopped reading it. Um, we just, I guess, didn't find that. I, my son didn't even really like the way it was written, so we just didn't think it was worth going. Yeah, but we have read, uh, watched a few documentaries in place of this, so one about Rasputin and one about the Romanovs, yeah. which took the place of reading the book, and they like that. Yeah. And Fiddler on the Roof is a great one, too. Our next one up is Cheaper by the Dozen, which we're super excited about because World War I, and we're talking about a lot of heavy stuff after that, so we wanted to have something fun and, you know, light. Yes. And then comes Echo, which is going to be right around World War II, but it's written kind of in a fantasy um, type narrative. And so I heard that the audiobook is great. I'm looking forward to the kids reading that. And then we're going to end with The Lemon Tree, which is, you could see, an Arab, a Jew, 
and the heart of the Middle East. So we wanted to make sure that they were reading about diverse parts of the world and diverse cultures, and I, I'm excited to read that one too. I hope that that really helped give you an overview of this curriculum, and honestly, it is a really beautiful curriculum. It is. There's nothing like your kids looking forward to doing phase three or phase two, and I feel like my kids just feel so relaxed by the end of the unit because they get to use that expression and we've just really thoroughly enjoyed it and not only that i feel like i've learned so much from it oh yes <laughs> well, and that's always wonderful side benefit of homeschooling is learning alongside your kids and this curriculum is so rich and i love 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 talking about the christian revivals yeah. and missionaries who have really impacted the Christian world. And that's been beautiful to see how that ties in. Yeah, Diana really brings a great perspective into history because she shows us all the mess that's going on, but then what God was doing right in the middle of that time. And that's been so refreshing and so appropriate even for today. Um, our kids are drawing all kinds of connections from history about what's going on today in our world. And I think that's priceless. Oh yeah, it is. And we hadn't done a Christian curriculum really in the past. So this has been really refreshing and enjoyable. So Diana, thank you. We definitely recommend this curriculum if you wanna try it out. The links are all in the description below, so check out her website also for more resources. On her website, you'll notice that she has the premium pack, but then she just has the essentials, she has just the CDs, so she has a lot to offer that maybe you wanna supplement into your history curriculum or dive into the entire thing. There's really a lot of options. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to comment below. Let us know if you like this curriculum, if you're thinking about doing it, or what other history curriculum you're gonna do. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video and share with your friends because this is an awesome curriculum and we want everybody to know about it. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.